Cap Grigny. It's one of the most famous and most visited places along the gorgeous Côte d'Opale. Next to the possibility to spot seals in the cold channel waters, the site is also littered with bunkers, trenches and craters. These remind the visitors of the Cap's rich war history. But despite all that, the Battle of Cap Grigny is very much a forgotten battle. After the Normandy breakout, the Americans rapidly pushed into the heart of France and raced towards the German border. The British and Canadians raced towards Belgium, but they often faced heavy resistance around the remaining French ports. One of these ports was Calais, along the Côte d'Opale. The Canadians had surrounded the city and the Germans were starting to run low on food, ammunition and manpower. While a truce was in action between the Germans and the Canadians at Calais itself, at the Cup things were very different. The 9th Canadian Infantry Brigade had received the task of eliminating the German resistance in and around the picture postcard Cap Grinet, which the Germans had turned into a formidable defensive position, full of bunkers armed with cannons that could reach all the way up to Dover across the channel. Defending the coastal batteries at Cap Grinet were the men of the 242nd Naval Coastal Artillery Battalion. In total there were three main batteries. Battery Tod, named after the famous Fritz Tod, founder of organization Tod, was located at Aringsel and had four 380mm guns. Battery Grosse Kurfust at Florenzel had four 280mm guns. The third battery was on the cup itself. Battery Grigny was armed with three 170mm guns. There was, however, a fourth battery at Huisson, but the battery, which counted full 150mm guns, had been captured earlier on in the Battle of Calais. The defending Germans, however, had one big handicap. Only the Grinet battery could fire inland, the other guns at Batterie Tot and Grosse Kurfust were fixed on firing towards England. Nonetheless, the 242nd Naval Coastal Artillery Battalion could still count on the countless minefields, barbed wire entanglements, pillboxes and anti-tank positions. Before the Canadians of the 9th Infantry Brigade were to attack the Cap, the Royal Air Force made two heavy raids on the Germans to destroy most of the defences. The first raid was carried out on the 26th of September 1944, when over 500 aircraft attacked. Two days later, on the 28th, another 302 aircraft would raid the Cap. The picture postcard place had been turned into a moon-like cratered landscape. The day after the second raid, on the 29th of September, the 9th Canadian Infantry Brigade attacked. On the right, the Highland Light Infantry of Canada was tasked with the capture of the Grosse Kurfürst battery. Once the Kurfürst battery fell in their hands, they were to press on towards the Grigny battery. On the left were the North Nova Scotia Highlanders. They were tasked to capture the Tort battery, as well as the Germans' headquarters at Kranorserf. The tanks of B Squadron 6th Armoured Regiment and the Flail Crocodile and AVRE tanks of the 79th British Armoured Division were in support of the attacking infantry. Before the actual attack, both battalions had carefully examined the ground and they had reconnoitred the area. Lieutenant Colonel D. F. Forbes of the North Nova Scotias had personally led a reconnaissance party in which he captured a pillbox. At 6.35am on the 29th of September, the Canadian artillery opened up and 10 minutes later the Highland Light Infantry and North Nova Scotias attacked. Several of the supporting tanks got stuck due to the immense craters and minefields. Nonetheless, the flail tanks proved to be most helpful in aiding the infantry with clearing a gap through the minefields. Under the cover of the creeping barrage, the Highland Light Infantry of Canada managed to capture the Kurfus battery at 10.30am with relative ease. They pressed on and in the early afternoon, Cap Grigny fell into Canadian hands. At the Battery Grigny, the Germans kept firing away with their coastal guns despite the fact that the Canadians were attacking them. Some witnesses describe as how the last shots were fired into the sea while the Canadians were right on top of the gun. Lieutenant Edward McLeish in command of 11 platoon led his platoon towards the 170mm guns of the battery. During the endeavour to get closer, three men were wounded and another man was killed. Despite the heavy fire being brought to bear on the 11 platoon, Lieutenant McLeish ordered his men to jump on top of the gun platform from where they threw grenades inside. 11 platoon was able to knock the gun out and the Germans inside the casemate surrendered. For his actions on the 29th, Lieutenant McLeish was awarded the Military Cross. The coastal guns kept firing until they were eventually put out of action by the sappers. 
Similar actions happen at the battery tot. The 380mm guns kept firing despite the fact that the North Nova Scotias had surrounded the huge casemates. AVREs were brought up which pounded the huge concrete bunkers and the Germans were eventually forced to surrender. By mid-morning, the Dodge battery fell into the hands of the North Nova Scotias after Lieutenant Klaus Momba in command of the battery surrendered. The North Nova Scotias on their turn moved on towards the Cranor's Earth, which they captured a few hours later. The Canadian attack on the Cap Grenet had been a very successful one. Some 1,600 German prisoners were taken. Both attacking battalions suffered 42 casualties combined, five of them being killed. With the capture of the big naval guns, Dover finally fell out of the reach of the Germans' guns. B Squadron of the 1st Hussars, also known as the 6th Canadian Armoured Regiment, didn't lose a single tank in the engagement. They provided the infantry with excellent support despite the difficult terrain. The truce at Calais would continue until the 1st of October when the Germans surrendered to the Canadians. The Battle of Cap Grenier is merely a footnote in the Battle of Calais, but for the inhabitants of Dover it was more than a welcome gift, as finally the English port city was safe from the German artillery guns. This was the Ace Destroyer, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can always subscribe, like the video and leave a comment down below. Cheers!